Hi, and welcome to the first webinar of um, the academic year um, 2021 to 22. Um, we are in October, so the beginning of October, but I understand that it has been quite the year already. So I'm really, really looking forward to a, a nice punchy um, webinar with you all looking at unity of vision and driving pupil progress. Now, I've broken this down into three key aspects. For, for students to really succeed at school, we need to all be singing off the same hymn sheet. We need a consistent approach. So I've, I've put together three things that are really crucial here at Bedrock and in the schools that we work with. So um, the role of reading is front and centre to everything we do. All Bedrock lessons start with reading. Um, and actually across the school, for driving people progress, we know how important reading is. So that will be our number one topic that we're going to cover today. Number two, consistency across the board, um, which is crucial and leading from the front um, with SLT, driving um, that progress too. And then number three, mapping a rich curriculum. Now that we're back in school with this sense of normality starting to um, return, um, we can really start thinking about, right, what do our plans look like? And are our students really, really prepared for the SATs and the GCSEs this year? So, as always, I like to start with the Education Endowment Foundation's recommendations for literacy in schools. Now, the three core things that we always return to at Bedrock are number one, prioritizing disciplinary literacy, so subject specific literacy across the curriculum. So students are really clear on um, ways to read in history, ways to read in geography, ways to read in maths. Um, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail. Um, providing targeted vocabulary instruction. And this is backed up by the Oxford Language Report as well. Um, so looking into that, obviously everything we do at Bedrock is teaching tier two and tier three vocabulary. Um, and we'll go into that. Um, and then developing students' ability to read complex academic texts and um, making sure that what they are reading is knowledge rich and language rich. So um, just to recap, obviously um, here at Bedrock, we've got Bedrock vocabulary, which teaches tier two vocabulary that comes up across the curriculum. We have our roots module, um, soon to be named morphology, Bedrock morphology. Um, and then we have Bedrock Grammar that is soon to come out as well. So we're really covering all the bases for literacy improvements across schools. Now, I want to break down the role of reading into three. You've got reading for pleasure, reading for knowledge and reading for purpose. Now, I'm going to start with a bit of context. Um, obviously, we've got a context on COVID, but I didn't want to focus too much on that. But just a few facts and figures, just to put this in stark relief. And actually, when you're doing staff training or SLT meetings, it's quite useful sometimes to start with some of these facts so that, you know, actually it brings it home to everyone how important reading for pleasure is. So how many disadvantaged children in the UK do not own a single book at home? Currently, it stands at one in 11. Bearing in mind um, you know, most classes are around 30. That means there's going to be three children, um, to put it starkly, in most classes that do not own a single book at home. So that is, you know, that is, it goes to show how important our library lessons are and, and all those efforts that we put in making sure that students are carrying books from the library in, in their um, in the satchels, making sure that we're modelling reading in front of them, all of that becomes super important when we remind ourselves of this statistic. Further to this, um, what percentage of young children are read to daily at home? And it's under a third. And we think about um, the, the process of reading and how much you learn by sharing reading or being read to from a very, very young age, um, it will really impact and we can see the impact in classes um, on you know the word gap um, widening as students work, get, go through their school career um, and also 
just um, when they get that transition to secondary school, bridging that gap, as the Oxford Language Report is called, um, often students really struggle with that jump to more academic language across the curriculum. So um, that's sort of covering reading for pleasure. We all know that that's really, really important and crucial um, across all schools and across all subjects. So, you know, whether you're key stage one, key stage five, key stage four, reading for pleasure really needs to be encouraged. Um, and it's something that we can embed into school policies and we've seen great practice and I'm sure you've all got that going on. Reading for knowledge, so building cultural capital, is also something really dear to our hearts here at Bedrock. So um, I just chose out this quotation, um, to grasp the words on a page, we have to know a lot of information that isn't set down on a page. Now, um, so I'm just um, looking at Dr. Ricketts uh, on the Oxford Language Report, um, who really stresses in her research that alongside you know four um, comprehension skills to really develop students need a broad and general knowledge of the world so how are we to build that because obviously when they come to accessing the curriculum reading textbooks um, answering questions in their sats paper if they don't have a knowledge of some of the words on the page so you need to understand 98 percent of the words then it's going to be difficult for them to access and to really really succeed and fulfill their potential so it's really up to us um, as teachers to ensure that our students have that general knowledge and that we do preempt in our planning what's going to come up what students might find tricky um, and make sure that we are guiding them through their reading. Um, thinking about the key skills, um, you know, predicting, clarifying, questioning, and seeing if we could introduce that, you know, maybe in groups. Um, we do discuss this in more detail on our Bedrock Learning podcast, um, which is downloadable um, and accessible on any any um, platform that you find podcasts. So if, you're, if this is an area of interest for you, it might be worth a listen. Now, um, Reading for Purpose has really, really cropped up. When we, last year, I started doing a best practice series with a range of different teachers. One comment that really stood for stood out for me was from Bronnie Williams, who works at the Cornerstone um, Trust. It's an English hub. Um, and she said, every lesson is a reading lesson. And actually to really highlight the purpose of the lesson, the purpose of the reading, um, to make it really, really clear. Obviously, each lesson is going to have a different task, a different learning objective. But um, during discussions and, and during um, some training with Alex Quigley, um, he brought my attention to this really, really useful um, resource from ESSA Academy. It's, it's um, downloadable for free on TESS, um, but it outlines the discipline, ways of reading and disciplinary literacy um, within particular subjects. So within English, what types of text you'll be reading, plays, poems, um, prose, and how you'll be analysing it and evaluating it. In maths, you'll be clarifying, making connections, um, and, and, and you know, looking at completely different things, but you're still reading a graph, you're, um, you're identifying um, anomalies. So it's, it's, it's training students for that. And so when we think of a unity of vision, we need to be um, nuanced and think about actually how does it apply to different subjects and different departments and to be sensitive to that because we do want a consistent approach we want um you know really good general literacy but actually subject specific literacy it needs to be down to the experts you know who is it that um, has a really good background in history and can guide us in the main um, main areas of reading in history? So, you know, comparing sources, um, looking at bias and all of those things. And how are we going to make that really explicit to students? Because often um, we assume that students, because they've you know, read at home, they've got a decent reading level, they, you know, implicitly know how to read in different subjects. But actually, it needs to be made, the the, visi the invisible needs to be made visible. Um, and I, I would recommend downloading um, this document um, and perhaps, you know, printing it, putting it across the school and making that knowledge visual, um, visible across the school. Um, because 
particularly when it, you know when we're approaching disciplinary literacy it can seem very very um, nebulous and large so to be able to sort of think right let's break it down this is a really good um, outline uh, and I often refer to it now um, I often share this slide it's a range of different GCSE questions um, from across all different subjects PE um, science maths history English and it becomes really, really clear that, you know, we, we know to access um, a GCSE paper, students need a reading level of 15 years and seven months. Um, so often students are sitting a maths paper and actually before they can do the maths, they've got to translate the tier two words. What is um, to reflect, to refract, to um, add or words that actually they're not being used in our everyday speech. So we need to teach them explicitly. So we start to notice that this reading for purpose, we need to start teaching that vocabulary. Once we start breaking it down, we see that to unlock that knowledge, we've got to unlock that vocabulary. Um, so just to really labor the point, um, the percentage of 15 year olds currently um, in year 11 ready you know who who are expected to sit their GCSEs at the end of this year um who have a reading age of 12 is 25 percent um so that's a quarter of all 15 year olds currently are unable to fully access their GCSE papers um, I did look into getting the statistics for SATs and um, that's broken down into um into different sections which is um you, more of their cognitive and and so it's un, i'm able to get a statistic like that but you can you know i'm sure year six teachers out there um have had similar issues with their year sixes who've just been unable to really unlock the questions and fulfill their potential just due down down to the level um of the reading in the papers. So we need to make sure they are prepared for that so they can succeed and drive that progress. So um, just to you know finish off on the reading and to really um, you know showcase the reading that students get to do on bedrock, um, they have a whole range and we're building that cultural capital, it's cross-curricular. Um, and then obviously we've got our GCSE schemes of learning and um, grammar coming along too, which is all um, starts with reading and, and all the tier two words that we're teaching are embedded in um, rich, high quality non-fiction and fiction texts, which I know many of you are enjoying. So um, the next point, so Obviously, reading needs to be front and centre. So now, how do we make this consistent across the board? Um, as I've alluded to, a good place to start is teaching tier two vocabulary within a range of contexts and making sure we're doing that in every single subject. Because tier two vocabulary, the academic vocabulary that comes up in written texts rather than in lots of spoken um, language, which most students come to school with that tier one vocabulary, um, is going to be crucial to um, for, for their success. Second, I put give students meaningful feedback, and this kind of um, this alludes to um, all the work that's gone on by the Education Endowment Foundation and plenty of others on um, self-regulated learning and metacognition. Um, for that to work really successfully, students need constructive feedback, um, and they need things to be clearly outlined so that they know what next steps they need to take and what kind of habits they need to get into to succeed and we need to hold their hands with that and as always tracking that progress so um, I thought this example really really shows um, starkly um, you know you could have a student that has the cognitive understanding but actually if they don't have that vocabulary they're unable to unlock that comprehension and really succeed um, across the subject and access um, access the curriculum. So these are two of the same points. So everyday talk, um, it hasn't rained in months. The farmers use new ways of watering the crops to deal with the lack of rain. If you have, you know, if you're fluent in English um, and you have that tier one vocabulary, you would easily understand that. However, when you're reading in a textbook 
or perhaps um, listening to it um, on a BBC documentary um, in class during a clip, um, it might be phrased as hydration technology was utilized to ease drought. You can see there's a stark difference there. Um, academic vocabulary is concise, um, it's Latinate, um, it's what um, Jeff Barton refers to as a language of power. If we're able to um, teach our students this explicitly across the board, we're going to empower them. Um, and also, um, if we consider that one in five of all students in the UK are classified as EAL, um, you know, they may be really fluent and may have that tier one vocabulary and be articulate when it comes to reading and understanding um, what they're reading in class um, and writing about it confidently. We need to be teaching that tier two vocabulary. And we need to do it in a way that is in a range of contexts, that is um, I encouraging that power of practice. So, you know, if we're doing it the same and teaching language in the same way across the curriculum, they get this, they start to learn, this is how I learn vocabulary. Okay, I'm reading it in context. Then I have those visuals, that dual coding, the synonyms and antonyms, and I'm putting it into practice. I've got a student friendly description and example, and I, and I get double checked by my teacher that I'm doing this right. And I'm sure there is plenty of this going on in all your schools. Um, but it, it's a case of making it really explicit and perhaps having a pro forma. I know um, some United Learning Schools, they start with the Freya model, for example, at the beginning of every lesson, what, whatever the subject. Um, and I think that's just a really clear way of saying to all students, vocabulary and reading um, and literacy essentially is crucial across the board for your success. Um, I took this rather long quotation from um, the, the 2018 um, study by the EEF on metacognition and self-regulated learning. So these are the recommendations by them. But um, a, a key quotation I'd like to tease out is, um, here we go. So there is evidence that suggests that disadvantaged pupils are less likely to use metacognition and self-regulatory strategies without being explicitly taught these strategies. So that is why we go back to that learning sequence at bedrock. It's straightforward and students are not thinking too much about the task. They're focusing on that language learning. Um, and, and it's that routine and habit that we want to really be drilling in at this time of year so that it just becomes part and parcel of your school rhythms. Um, and yeah, so with explicit teaching and feedback, students are more likely to use these strategies independently and habitually, which is exactly where we want them to be. So um, as you can see, just an um, example of the um, thorough feedback that we give on bedrock, bedrock. So if they're not getting it quite right, we'll guide them and steer them in the right direction, just as you would in the classroom. And if they are getting it right, we don't just say, well done, you got it right. We reiterate right that, why that was a correct answer. Um, and it's all human narrated, so their hands are held throughout. So obviously this is what you're doing in class, but to be able to systemize it is really powerful. And actually, um, all, every single bit of um, content on Bedrock is assessed, taught and retaught. So that is the um, deep learning algorithm um, that drives our intelligent, knowledge rich um, curriculum. So this just makes sure that you can rest assured that the system Systematic, um, and it's an um, intelligent approach to literacy improvement. So um, if you're not already using Bedrock, it may be worth reaching out um, to one of our um, curriculum consultants and asking them to really talk you through. Um, here you can see it vaguely, but we have the, a knowledge organiser, all students have it, all teachers and parents can access it and see it. And they can see, you know, what words they are learning. So what words are still struggling with after the post-test, we will continue to teach them until they get them right. So it's an automated algorithm. And words they have learned, um, they don't just sit there. Um, as we know, the human memory and the human brain can be fickle. So we always double check that on a rolling monthly basis um, and just you know as a teacher you can be rest assured that that is happening automatically and systematically um, and there are plenty of tools to really build on that and reinforce it in the classroom and again we are always more than happy to talk you through that
Now, third and finally um, is mapping a rich curriculum. Obviously, um, we have already mapped for Key Stage 3 all the way to Key Stage 5 um, a Tier 2 vocabulary curriculum that is ready off the shelf for any school to use. Um, now, when it comes to Tier 3 vocabulary, which is that subject specific, specific and domain language, um, this um, we have bedrock mapper so I do want to talk you through that and talk about you know how schools are really benefiting from that and how they are tracking the progress on that and um, which is ensures that you've got really embedded disciplinary literacy um, which not only is you know ticking the box for tier two vocabulary for across the curriculum but also your tier three for subject specific which is essentially all knowledge um, that is going to be learned and taught within your curriculum so they'll be already on your curriculum um, just to, you know before we go into some of the examples um, I just wanted to draw your attention to this which I thought was extremely interesting as an English teacher myself I know how important um, a decent reading level is to, for outcomes at GCSE but actually the correlation between reading level and outcomes at GCSE is higher in which subjects history English or maths it's in fact maths um, and actually, you know, drilling down into this and looking at some of the questions historically on the mass paper, you know, asking students um, what's the percentage of the auditorium that are in, you know, stool B. And you've got hundreds of students out there um, visualizing a kitchen stool. Um, we all know that that is the case. And actually, you know, it's crucial um, and it's not really testing their maths but it's they need that literacy to access the maths so if you're interested in this this was taken from gl assessment um again this is something that alex quickly um alerted me to um so yeah i thought that was quite interesting right so the next one um we've got mapper so you can see here some of the words that teachers are already teaching on mapper so in science we've got osmosis meniscus conductor gravity in maths we've got decagon quadratic equation um in geography you've got deforestation urbanization lots of processes in geography um and then you know it, it goes on and obviously within your subject you will know what is crucial um for you now, this is really easy for you to build your own curriculum. I won't talk you through it in too much detail because, again, you can reach out to us at any point. And there are um, videos on YouTube to guide you with this. Um, but we guide you step by step. And it's following that bedrock learning sequence. You know, we are um, assessing them, teaching them and reteaching them throughout. And we're just making sure they're getting that student friendly description, the visuals, the synonyms and antonyms and putting it into practice. So it really, really enables you as a teacher to track um, progress. Now, um, obviously, tracking progress really, really works if there's a really easy way of doing it. We are um, already extremely busy um, in this profession. So um, if something can save us time and make our lives easier, then I'm all for it. So our traffic like system that comes in your weekly email is absolutely absolute godsend for that um, and I teachers really appreciate the, the smiley faces and they can give the merits um, and, and and give intervene and support and encourage where's necessary so that's just on a weekly basis and then obviously your monthly um, reports that are also emailed um, and accessible on the dashboard whenever you like are really useful um, during staff briefings to raise awareness and to sort of drive and share best practice so um and you know as it's designed by teachers for teachers um all of the um all of the um reports are downloadable um to excel and so you can manipulate them and color code them and share them in your staff drive and in fact half of them are already color coded for for you um, so that it's really clear who to praise, who to encourage and who to, who to intervene with. So just to recap, um, as we're coming to an end, I think for a real unity of vision and to drive progress um, across your schools when it comes to literacy improvement, um, reading needs to be forefront and center. And, um, you know, we need to consider disciplinary literacy and bear that in mind when we're looking at the role of reading. And then 
consistency across the board. It needs to be put into place through regular tracking um, and, and people teaching tier two vocabulary, um, whatever their subject. And then thirdly, we can really map a deep and broad curriculum if we go deep into that knowledge in each subject, teaching that tier three vocabulary. Um, if you haven't already downloaded our fantastic resources for Black History Month. Um, we've got a range for a range of different ages and, it, and also our um, social media team have been um, putting up recommendations of books which I found really really insightful and useful um, not just for this month but for you know for students um, throughout the year. Um, this is worth downloading and again um, if you're unable to find it just give us a call um, and contact your account manager or your, the curriculum consultant in your area and we will um, get those to you. Um, just before we end, I think we've got a quick question. Um, but thank you so much um, for everyone for attending. Here we go. Ah, uh, Yes, we will um, be sending across the resources at the end. Um, but thank you very much. Um, I will also send across um, this PowerPoint for you to share with your colleagues. Um, you should also find a recording of this on YouTube. But thank you very much and have a good rest of the week.